Hey, what's up guys? So I'm back with the Anycubic Castle 3D printer. So I got this about a week and a half ago from Gearbest and they gave it to me to do an unboxing review. I already did an unboxing and build, so if you haven't seen that and you're interested in that, I'll put an annotation card. It'll pop up right there and right somewhere over here. And you know, you can click on that or whatever and watch that. But after having it, you know, a week and a half, two weeks, I've had a lot of time to play with it, and I can really give my honest review. This is this was given to me for free for the review, but I'm not letting that impact my review at all. This is exactly how I feel, whether or not it's worth it. This is only $169. Um, just the fact on how big the Z-axis is, is it, just amazing for $169 to be able to print things. You could literally print like up to this high. You know, and you could always upgrade these rods and put new belts for around $20 to $30 and make it as big as you want. Right now, I'm running wood. PLA through it. Um, I printed several things since I got it. I tried it. When I first started printing with this, I was getting a little bit of rippling effects. You see like on this rocket, you know, I kind of printed this as uh, a lot of people use these, like I see Preston at Press Reset use this as like a benchmark print to, you know, check out his printers. But yeah, I was getting a lot of rippling. So I slowed everything down quite a bit and then my prints turned out much, much nicer. Here's this vase. Here's a wall mount for my electric skateboard. I actually have some hanging on the wall with these. So I'll put a picture of that right now. But yeah, uh, here's a little baby Groot. Um, this is a scaled down version of this one. See, I printed, I've been using this wood PLA. Here is the first, one of the first things I tried. And it's a baby Groot. And then I used a little um, shoe, brown shoe polish on there to just give it a little more you know three-dimensional look to it um, but not perfect uh, I actually took a time-lapse of this so I'm gonna play that right now Okay, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, that was when I first was using this and then I found out how to get the cleaner prints was to just slow everything down. On the on big stuff, like if you're just printing out like the upgrade parts, like all the upgrade parts for this thing, I put on there. I even made a top spool holder. I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, I made a different bed mount. Um, I made these cool bell covers. Yeah, I, everything's been printed with this machine. But yeah, once I slowed everything down, my prints started getting a lot nicer. That's how I got it. Like this one, this base, and then look at this giant baby group uh, pencil holder. This is for my girlfriend's desk. I'm gonna make one for myself too, though. Um, I did the same thing after it was done. I took a little nail, uh, not nail polish, shoe polish, some brown shoe polish, and I I put it on there. And then with a wet rag, I just wiped it off. You know, and just kind of smudged it a little, so it was just to give it a little more 3D look. But yeah, I mean, look at how smooth. I didn't sand anything. It's just really, really good. Oh, I'm wearing these sunglasses because I got the studio lights directly in my face. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for it, but I don't really give a fuck. So, yeah. Casey Neistat can do it in every video. No one says anything. So, what, what the hell. But yeah, um, one thing I must say, my one only downside I've found so far to this printer is it sounds like freaking R2-D2. You hear that? It is quite loud, like if you're in the same room as it, and you're trying to sleep or something, you know, this isn't going to be a, a printer you're going to want to have like in your bedroom running overnight or anything, but it's it's not horrible, I mean, as, as long as you're not trying to sleep or anything, it's, it's not like you, the TV or if you have a fan on that, you know, obviously drown up. Right now I'm actually printing a wooden yo-yo, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's wood, kind of, because I'm using the Hatchbox, you know, wood filament or whatever, but yeah, one thing I love about this is this display so let me show you guys how this LCD you can adjust everything and how I got my prints a little better just using 
with some adjustments right here on the onboard display. Okay guys, so one thing I love about this is just the ease of these menus and the just having the button and the scroll wheel just uh, is much nicer. So, you know, if you want to pause a print, you can pause it, you can stop it. But what you really what really helped me was I used all the stock Cura settings that they came it came with, but then I go into here where it says tune. And this is where you want to make your small adjustments. Like I was getting better quality prints when I turned the speed down to like 80. So I turned the speed down to around like 80-ish, you know, whatever, 84, that's fine. Um, originally I was running it at 195. Since then I've switched to 190. And how I figured that out was I printed this and you can see here at the bottom, hopefully it's focusing, but it was kind of like rough right down here. And then I kind of slowed it down a little and with the tuning and cooled it off by five degrees and it just started printing way, way smoother. One thing I always do, if it's starting to come out a little like that, is I actually will adjust the flow. So you can go down to flow and I turned that to just like 97 and that little bit of change just made it stop over extruding. That was something I, I messed with when I was doing this rocket. You notice here, it's kind of like over extruding and then it got a lot smoother. I learned a lot of this from watching that, uh, I, he's like the, I can't remember his YouTube channel name. It's like 3D Senpai is what they call him, but I can't remember his actual cha channel name. I'll put it on the screen, but he's got videos where people just send him, like like live streams where people are sending pictures of the prints and he says what he thinks is why it's doing it. And I followed that same stuff and it, I've drastically been able to get my prints better. And one other thing you can do is control here and you can go to motion. Now, this is a very, very fast printer. So one thing that's nice is if I really want the print to uh, you know, print real nice, I can slow it down a lot and this is still gonna be a very fast printer, like way faster than my other 3D printer that's a Cartesian style. So I found with the acceleration cut in half, I know that seems like I'm really slowing it down, but it doesn't really add that much time to the print and it, the quality makes it so much better. So I turned the acceleration down by half. Okay, and then there's all these jerk settings. So they're all stock at five. I turn them all to three. Okay, so I just turn all these to three. And I notice a dramatic uh, improvement in my print quality. So just the ease of how this display is like, you know, if a print's not coming out right off the bat, good you can adjust it and make sure you know by the time it gets you know farther into the layers where you're really going to notice the details it's printing perfect so being able to adjust it so easy and everything i really like the marlin firmware on here and just just the way this feels and everything too it doesn't feel cheap yeah, everything feels really nice um let me show you one more thing here let me take my camera off my tripod okay i got the camera off the tripod but yeah let me show you all these parts are all printed, you know, on this printer. So these are just some little, you know, these don't really do much. They just, I guess they prevent some crap from falling in there, but more than anything, is make them look cooler. And then I really like the the, the heated, or well, not heated bed clips, the regular bed clips, uh, much better than the stock ones. <clears throat> they seem to clip it down much better. And then this, I printed this, mind you, when I was not very good at we're in like my first day, so it's kind of rough. But yeah, it's a spool holder that goes on the top. Here, let me sit on this PLA on the table. And yeah, it's got bearings that actually move. They're not, they're not the best, because I, like I said, this was on my first day before I really fine-tuned the settings. You know, it's much rougher, but you can notice like here, my prints went from that to that. And I gotta get different screws for that. But I drill those holes out differently. But anyways, yeah, so they can be more like that. But yeah, that's a work in progress. But yeah, anyways, so I'm gonna redo this, but it just, it still still works just fine. It's just not like as free moving as you would want it to be. But very cool, plastic bearing. So yeah, everything has been printed just using this printer, so. Very cool, we got our start of our yo-yo. Okay guys, so that's my final review of the Anycubic Castle. I'm gonna continue to use this for future projects, like more, you know, 3D printed yo-yos and all sorts, all sorts of cool stuff. But yeah, if you guys want to pick up one of these with a link in the description, you can get it for $169. I believe the retail is $200. It commonly goes on sale for $189, but $169 is the cheapest you're ever going to find it. So the link will be in the description if you want to pick up one of these. 
And if you do, and you you end up printing out some cool stuff, make sure to share it with me. You can go on my Instagram, uh, uh, at hotdiggity86, or you could uh, tag me on Twitter, at Kowalski Dylan. So, I'd love to see it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. More stuff coming in the future. And until next time, I'll see you later.